and welcome to The Silent Why. I'm back with another Graveyard Musings episode. I'm Claire, host of the podcast, and as I record this, I'm still struggling to get my voice back to normal after a dry throat viral thing that I've had for nine weeks. So if I sound a little bit strange, that's why. Now, for you faithful followers who have been around for a while, or for those of you that love to start a new podcast from episode one, you might remember that I've done a few episodes called Graveyard Musings. This is because I'm a great lover of graveyards, and wandering around them to read the names and the stories on the headstones. They just fascinate me. So while I was doing this at our local graveyard, I thought I'll record some of my thoughts and make them into an episode or episodes, which I did in a three-part series. Then, a while later, I took Graveyard Musings on the road and we went international and I did an extended episode from Belgium where I visited the world's largest cemetery for Commonwealth soldiers, Tynecott. Then I did one from a cemetery that I can't even pronounce in North Wales and now I'm back with another one from Belgium from a trip that Chris and I took at the end of 2023. And there's another cameo from husband Chris in this episode as we wander around a graveyard not far from where we were staying in Morsled, Morsled Communal Cemetery. Then, over the road from that one, we actually wandered into a very new-looking cemetery with a word on the wall that I also couldn't pronounce. However, it turned out when consulting our Dutch friends, it's just the word for cemetery anyway. To hear its proper pronunciation, I have to go over to our good friend Jelga. Begraafplaats. So many A's in that word, I cannot tell you. Do you need four A's? Anyway, the village of Morsled is located northeast of the town of Ypres. Morsled was in the German hands for much of the First World War, until it was taken by Belgium troops on the 29th of September 1918. And the communal cemetery contains the graves of two Commonwealth airmen from the First World War, killed in air combat in November 1917. Now, Chris and I didn't know that when we were looking around, so when we're pondering why there are two war graves there, you're already going to know why. However, I'm still no further forward on who our Lady Bunderan was, or why that pathway went into a brick wall, and whether she was actually 600 years old. We came across this cemetery on an evening walk, a bit like we did in Wales, and decided that we'd wander around and record some of our conversation again, because the cemeteries in Belgium are not like the ones in Wales or in England. There's a lot to see visually in this graveyard, which we're not amazing at painting with words, so if you want to see what we're describing, head over to the link in the show notes to see my photos and any video that I'll put on the website, plus the giant succulent that I really wanted. So, enjoy our musings as Chris and I wander around a Belgish, is that a word? Cemetery. Okay, so here we are in Belgium again. Morsled. Morsled specifically. And we've come to visit a cemetery this time that is not a war-based one, just a a, one. a normal cemetery yeah. <laughs> um, for Belgian people. Uh, this is not like a normal cemetery in England. This is very different. How would you describe what you're looking at now? Um, <laughs> a lot of stone. A mixture of styles. <laughs> We just walked down a long stretch where it's almost like the coffins, if presumably there's coffins in there, being placed inside giant marble boxes which have been sunk two thirds into the ground with a third of the box and a huge tablet. So these are sort of six foot by three foot maybe, all lying flat ish, slight angle, with a little bit of writing. They're quite minimal, really. Really there's not minimal. Much. Sometimes it's just literally a name. They haven't even got dates. There's no inscription, no quotes. There are quite a lot of photos which are kind of put on stone, or like marble, of the people that have died. Some flowers, not many flowers. No, almost hardly any real flowers. There's a few, but they're sort of planted in actual like flower planters at the end of the grave, not laid on the stone or the marble. If you, if you glance up from them, you've then got... We haven't got to them yet, but you've got what looks more like stuff we'd see in Britain. Upright, yeah, but 1800s stone, Britain. slabs, ornate crosses. All so, made of like what looks like concrete. Yeah, so very different And they're all, styles. I mean, they're literally touching. A lot of them are different styles of stone and marble and concrete, but they're touching each other side by side, so really packed in. If you turn around, the ones behind it's us are different again. Completely different. They're just flush to the floor. Again, large pieces of stone or marble. marble probably about five, five foot by four, three foot. Different styles. Again, pebble dash. Look at that pebble dash grave. Yeah, it's so different from their war cemeteries, which are so organised and so uniform. This is a very different setup, and they look really expensive. I mean, you know, headstones are expensive, but this is like 
I don't know, something that's sort of four, five, six times the size of a normal headstone that we'd see in marble in the UK. And then the writing isn't even etched for some of these over here. It's like metal that's been, it's like written in metal and then attached to the top of it. Just a name, a birth date and the death date. So if you, just, if you just read these two people next to us. Willie Ferenz. <laughs> <laughs> and Maria John Cheese. <laughs> yeah, they're not um, they're not easy names to pronounce. And quite a few of them as well. The surnames aren't the same. Presumably, it's well, you'd, you'd sort of assume. Well, I'd assume that most of these are a husband and a wife. Let's say unless they put maiden names, or they don't take married names here so much. So they put maiden names on the graves. Most, yeah, most of them. The surnames. There's two people's names on there, and the surnames are different. A lot of these kinds of photos. I'll take some photos yeah. so you can see what I'm talking about. But um. It's almost like there's a law that you can only have on the actual stone slab a name and the dates. And anything extra you want to do and has to go on a separate piece of... They've almost all got the same metal cross on it with a flower climbing up it or not. It's almost like the flower represents something. Whether you have the flower or you don't have the flower. The ones behind you, they're slightly different. They have a little bit more yeah, writing on Yeah, they're completely different. I'm going to use my Translate app to see what some of this text says. Something Julian yeah. de Bush rests here. Goodbye to your Madeline Gall. <laughs> There's a chance translators are quite so, cool That's, that's so romantic. That. <laughs> Beautiful words, aren't they? Yeah. Hair must be Mr or dear. Oh, this is an oh. interesting one. I took a photo of it. Uh, so 1914 to 1918, the Firecross Department, Roselair, and surrounding regrets, warrior, Akil van der Lanut, Gvel, something dates the 3rd of March, 1974. Okay, yeah, that, I mean, you may have got that regrets warrior translated wrong. That doesn't sound like something that exists. Mm, not directly. <laughs> So we're wandering to the end because um, Chris has spotted a giant bug hotel he wants to have a look at. Well, I thought it was like a <laughs> kiosk, some sort of Punch and Judy. No, it's definitely a bug hotel. Uh, okay. So we're in a more, a slightly more grassy area, not a lot more. And, oh, there's a grave just literally in the middle of the... Yeah, this is worrying. Oh, it's been lifted. Looks like the whole it's entire been lifted grave off. been lifted off. And Looks like we're about to see... in the middle of the grass walkway. Oh, okay. So we can see here what's underneath these big marble stones it's soil <laughs> they must bury people and then put these big slabs that we're looking at on top of where the person's been buried well, i'm not so sure it looks like it's been there a while well, it doesn't some... well they'd probably have to wait for the ground to drop must it's be very sandy soil so these ones at the end here have got like um a black uh what do you call that what do you call that cross no, no, the inscription where they've put the words. There's like a black rectangle, which looks black. like it's made of glass or something. And then the words are sort of etched on, but in a kind of a... Very similar font. 90s, it funky... It reminds me of C-fax or Teletext. Font, yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> that will only be understood by those in Britain. Yeah. Familiar with C-fax and Teletext. I'm also slightly distracted by the watering can that's attached to a chain on that pole. That's hanging off the ground. Yeah, what's that for? Well, clearly it's for watering plants. Well, yeah, but if it's chained to the pole... Oh, look! This is Belgium for you. They're just so organised. So the watering can is hanging from a metal pipe just off the ground. And to get the watering can away from it, you have to put in a coin like you do on trolleys. They've literally got the top of a trolley. In the supermarket. That's clever. And you put your euro, whatever it is, you take the watering can, you do your watering, you put it back, you get your euro back. That is genius. Yeah, brilliant. Never seen one of those before. Just... I was constantly amazed by the organisation of this country. We should introduce that more into the, the home. Is there anything that we lose quite a lot? <laughs> Put a coin system in place. Yeah, a coin system. <laughs> you have to return it to get your coin back. Okay, so now we're, we're in amongst the, uh, I'd say, more grander graves. I mean, the one Chris has stood next to must be about 15 feet by 15 feet. Yeah, bigger than a king-size bed, that is. That is huge. In pure marble, probably. Yeah, well, no, it's probably like... Panels... Eight feet square, thick. something like that. What concerns me slightly is the central panel, which is probably the size of a double bed, has slipped slightly, revealing <laughs> so you can just see inside. a slight gap into the inside. 
And because there's no dates on there, we have no idea how old the occupants are inside. Look how classy this one is. Just a big old flat piece of marble. It just says family brain, B-R-E-Y-N-E, and then a cross and P-A-X, which I'm sure translates into something. It's very classy, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know, though. It's just like a big box you will get put in. I'm, I, I am missing the um, nice words and inscriptions. That's partly sort of what I like. I feel like they tell stories. These do not tell stories. Well, it's you, just... you do not speak Belgium. Or Dutch or whatever they speak here, yeah, Flemish. It's just a name. You can't get much more from a name. What story have you d- deduced from that name? That's true. Whereas at least a quote gives you a bit of an insight. Or, like you said, you know, son, mother, daughter. This this one's very cracked. Very old looking piece of stone. But then I don't think there's actually anything. I wonder if there's actually anything in or on, under these. Maybe they are just all put on top of graves that are on the ground. Maybe all, everything above ground is just sort of for show, there's no actual Well this section coffins. we're moving to now, mainly 19th century. A lot of very big concrete crosses that are like, I don't know, what, 12 feet tall? I mean that one over there is about 15 yeah. feet tall. We'll have to move around to the other side so we can see what's on these big, the oldest, presumably the oldest graves here. I do love their photos, lots of photos, like weatherproof photos, not like paper photos. And what looks like a roundabout in the middle. Yeah, a little roundabout. Hydrangeas. They've got hydrangeas everywhere in this country. All nice pink colour, which for those of you who like gardening will tell you something about the soil. Oh, these very old photos. Very old. So these were buried in, oh, 1874. Yeah. And then 1936. 1878, is that 1939? These are like things out of horror films. You know when the stone is like smashed and something rises up? This stone's been cracked into four. There is lots of You can just see the bricks underneath, actually. Look, there's obviously not actual... They're not directly on. I'm surprised how much of these... They tend to go for huge slabs of stone. So many of them are cracked, smashed. They also Why? Don't, don't weather very well. And also something that I've noticed is that so many inscriptions that have been put in the stone have eroded. Yes, they're not very deep. They don't, they don't seem to put stuff on these graves to last. So what I can't work out is when you've got a big marble slab like this in a grave and then you've got two bits of stone or marble that are put stood on top of it like, like you would stand up a photo frame so just loose you could just pick it up and take it away and they've got like a little inscription on them but this one here just says Ausstreicher <laughs> 1940 to 45 which is obviously only five years so is that a child that's added in well look let's or... look at what Ausstreicher means so Ausstreicher means old warrior Okay. 1940 <laughs> to 1945. So whoever's really five years in old war. That's the question. Yeah, I don't understand why that bit is separate from the actual grave. And there's these little wooden plaques with like bits of laminated paper attached to them, with names and stuff on. But I need a translator for that. Part of a, some sort of survey or work to make clear, keeping a record of the graves, don't know. It's really interesting how I presume if you're from Belgium, you're, this is like a fairly normal sort of cemetery. But it's so interesting how different cultures do it. Because for us, this is it's quite different. It's quite alien as far as cemeteries I've seen in England very ornate tells you a lot about different countries the way that, where they bury their dead well we've just reached the end by a rather high maybe 10 foot brick wall and there's five quite randomly positioned graves against the wall so are they there because they're special and they get an exclusive spot or because they're or outcasts I mean exactly <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mac 
making the noise. You just looked up what these little wooden signs mean. Yes. It looks like it's a notification or some sort of concession that things need to be renewed. Or I think it need, basically means it needs work. But there's, lots of them have got it. Not even the worst ones, actually. Well, those I think that, it's permission, maybe. Those that own cemeteries have to, they've got a duty of care, haven't they, to make sure that their the graves are safe and that no one could be injured in this increasing time of health and safety. So they're clearly putting out notices to say work is to be carried out to this grave to make it safe. There's an area which just, well, there's two areas I want to have a look at. Okay, let's do that one first. There's an area I could just see through the other graves. It's just this row of concrete crosses all about maybe two, three feet tall, all look exactly the same with the same plaque. This looks a lot more like the kind of military graves. Oh, in fact, those two are very they're identical to the graves at Passchendaele. Yes. Well, most of the war cemeteries of the Commonwealth war graves, and they are for lieutenants. So they're the ones I described in one of my previous graveyard musings when we went to, to the Passchendaele graveyard. They're like the white stone with it's got oh, engraved on it. Second Lieutenant, Royal Field Artillery, so it gives kind of their rank and the date, age 22, 1917, and then there's, a, there's that cross on it that's quite familiar, so, and then the stamp of the, what is that, of their regiment or something? It's just something military, yeah. Why those two have been put here and not in a, yeah. a Commonwealth War? So they're the only two in, that we can see in the whole cemetery that look like that. And then next to that is a plot that's got all of these little crosses and names. But they're people who died in the 2000s, so 2018, 2011, 2004, so they're not necessarily war-related. But there is a plaque here, which maybe Chris can translate. It starts with Rustplatz, which we've worked out means resting place. Yeah. And then underneath it said Zusters OLV Middleairs. I'm sure I pronounced wrong, which actually translates to... Resting place, sisters, our lady of the middle ages. Ah, so these are women. They've all got the word zuster in it, which must mean sister. In the local nunnery. So yeah, these would be nuns. And then there's two or three in the Titranger flower bed. <laughs> Seems unusual. Maybe they had a special request to be yeah, placed maybe. away from the rest. How strange. Also, what's interesting about the nuns' graves is that there's five empty ones waiting for nuns. Waiting for nuns? I presume. Yeah. I presume sisters are nuns out here. Maybe they're just like, what's a medical sister? <laughs> you know, that work in hospitals. They're okay. sisters. I'm not sure that's what these are for. <laughs> and this one here... This is a really unusual... Like a piece of sculpture of crosses that are all intersecting each other into one big sort of piece of concrete i haven't described that very well but next to it it says 10 blunderen 10 blunderen 1269 I mean, no one's lived from 1269 to 1980. 1980 and then there's like a pathway that leads away from it into a brick wall chris is walking on it i'm not sure if that's allowed but he's gonna take his google translate our lady 10 blunderen ah there we go 1269 to 1980 our lady 10 blunderen like you said, I don't think she lived from 1269 to 1980. Very old lady. That would have, she'd have seen a lot in that lifetime. Do some maths. How old was she when she died? Uh, well, seven, 600, <laughs> 611 years old. I mean, that does deserve a special sort of monument, I suppose. Yeah, we're no further forward on that one. So now we've moved to the other area that stands out as being very different. This is this is more like I'd expe expect things to be in Belgium when you talk about being organised. So there's lots and lots of marble posts that are about 12 inches wide, 3 inches deep, a couple of feet high. And they've almost all, I want to say all, yeah, got almost got photos of the person who died on them. It's mostly with a cross the name and then maybe dates. Sometimes there's two people and they're all very modern. So they've all died 2005 onwards-ish. I'll tell you what this makes me think of. If I was being buried here, what photo would you choose of me? It's a big thing, isn't it? It's not just something that's put up on a screen at your funeral. This is 
what do you want people to see? And interestingly, most people have gone for very serious photos. There's not much here that makes you smile or laugh. No. Well, Jacques here, who died in 722... He looks mischievous. ...might rightly say to his family, why did you choose the one with the blue curtain behind my head? <laughs> so that's a horrible curtain. I mean, Jean-Pierre might be, you know, frustrated that he wasn't even looking at the camera. Well, he's, he's clearly at some sort of bird-spotting hut. Yeah. I don't know, Wilhelm doesn't look like he was. He knew his photo was being taken. Wilhelm looks more like Phil Mitchell from EastEnders. Ludwig looks like, don't take my photo. Oh, look at Willie Pinkett, he looks happy. <laughs> also slightly stretched sideways, I think they might have tweaked the image and accidentally stretched him. Uh, great picture. Dirk. He's got a look of mischievous about him. Oh, no picture on Franz no. Tornelli. But they have got a, uh, an inscription thing instead. From Sasha, Riss and Dylan. Franz looks very angry that he died at all. There's a lot of Franz, isn't there? So, you know, clearly these can't be burial spots. Ashes, I reckon. Must be ashes. But it's done large, large for ashes. And it would also tell me that more modern people are getting cremated. They're not getting buried. So, okay, look at this couple here. So this is a couple photo mm -hmm. rather than one person, which is quite rare. But they too have like a stripy blue backdrop. And then Germain here has got a yeah. slightly striped. So I think, and Wilfred as well, I think I, I was unfair to Jacques in criticising the family's choice of curtain backdrop. Uh, so either there's a business here in Belgium where you can go and have a, a pre-death photo taken against some blue curtains. I don't think it would be pre-death. I think it would just be like a family photo. Or someone's <laughs> using computer software with the photos that's submitted. And they've opted for blue. To uh, change the backdrop. I'm a bit sad for Christiane. Christiane? Um, I, it looks like she might have got arrested sometime when they used the mugshot photo. It's a little photo. bit of a wanted picture. It really is. Oh, these don't have... Oh, look... Jerome's got like his it looks like a sort of a military uniform on, like an old guy. Old hat. So oh okay, I was about to say I haven't what I haven't seen is anyone any young people, but there's a there's a line down the back here that's definitely well there's one grave there, it's definitely a child. A lot more angels and statues on me this time. Uh yeah, look. So that's like March to May nineteen ninety. So these would be the children. But Interestingly, they've still got really quite big, ornate stone graves. There's one here that's got a, like a bright pink glass bit in it with like a rabbit and a moon. A uh, little girl, the end of the month. Mm. Oh look, this one was the year I was born. Again, I only lived a few months. Shipley, what a great name, Shipley. First name. Lots of people have Shipley as a second name. Yeah, Shipley Vinky. It's nice that wall at the okay. end there, yeah, look the at that. The wall. What, 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 what happened here? Just a big patch of leaves. Maybe that's more like the equivalent of a natural burial. <laughs> Missing grave. It's just, yeah, it's a gap in between all the marble, but all you can see is grass and some sort of plant growing. One of the things that strikes us about this part of the world in West Flanders in Belgium is how different all the houses are. You, know, you don't get a street where all the houses are the same. Every house is individually Completely made, Completely different. And partly that's, I guess, due to the fact that it's so new that so much of this area was flattened mm. in the First World War, bits of it Second World War. So, so much of it has been built new. So maybe you shouldn't be too surprised that a graveyard like this, there's so much variety in how the graves look. There isn't one particular style that everyone follows. What massively stands out is the amount of pictures. I have never seen this many photos and they're all propped on top of the grave. Like, like photo frames. But in marble. Uh, and they're everywhere. Very visual. I haven't seen that before. We've got another section of sisters. Oh yeah, again. Concrete crosses all in a row. Identical. There's two rather large waste bins over there, so I'm not sure who gets the corner with the waste <laughs> bins. It's a bit of a slur. 
got one last bit to look at before we exit. Look at this one. What would you describe these blocks against the wall? How do you, what do they look like? They look like, they look like yeah, if you imagine a brick wall and it's got built into it locker doors that are made of what looks like glass from a distance. We can see words on them. There's flowers on the floor. Some are hanging off the front of the doors. My guess is this is another ashes space. It's a very nice looking succulent in that pot there. I'm one of those myself. Okay, so it's actually marble. Yeah, I thought they were glass. And it's got um, the name and the dates on it. Again, nothing else. Oh, and a cross. They've all got a cross on them. And the most recent as well. I think that's 2023. That's the most recent one I've seen. Yeah. Again, quite a lot of them have all got photos on. So presumably in these square hatches, you place an urn. Yeah, I would have thought so. screw on a, a marble. And there's plate. some blank ones here. Not many, though. Also, you can't really add to it, can you? I do really want that succulent. That's a massive succulent. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. I guess the further you go down, the older they are. If there is flowers, they tend to be fake. Someone says two people. Not many, though. Mostly one. Interesting design idea. Hmm. And so different to what... Whoa. Oh my, oh Look at word. this. What is this? Okay, this is the most modern grave I have ever seen. 1959 to 2011, Piet has outdone himself. Herself? Himself. Who knows? It's a grey slab of marble, like a normal one. Oh, look at that bug. Quite red. <laughs> um, it's about two inches tall. Goes like the whole length of the grave. And then on top of it is six metal posts. Poles? Maybe poles. And then there's a curved bit of glass that's sort of attached to the poles, hovering about six inches off the grave. We'll get a photo. I don't know how to describe it, but it's pretty incredible. And the fact that glass is so clean tells me someone's looking after it well as well. That is really unusual. And some sort of transcription that follows Yeah, the that glass goes all around. the way around the outside. Coming to you now with a live Google Translate. Bob sweet until it starts writing. Right, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure Google Translate photos helping us out on this. Love until it hurts. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, go too far and strive by force nor by war. Oh dear. It's a bit tricky because the way it curves. Something about dishonour, apparently. I don't believe that. It seems no. to be some sort of like poemy. Yeah, I don't think my translate app is particularly accurate. <laughs> so we found a weird gate. Beautiful, it's not weird. Good day. Okay, so we found a wall, a small sort of triangular wall with a big headstone in the middle, and there's just lots of plaques with names on them, tiny little ones, just with literally the name and the dates. And then lots of flowers beneath that, and then little stones that are propped up on the ground. Some with photos on again, names and dates. And at the top it says Spread Meadow, is the uh, translation. Um, and as Chris pointed out, there's a big piece of grass behind it that's all sort of cornered off. This is the Spread Meadow. So we reckon this is where people can spread ashes and then just have a plaque put up for the for their loved one instead of actually having the urn here. And you can see in the middle of the grass what looks like a recent spreading of some ashes. That's another option. It's just a little way to walk into it. So if you want to spread the ashes just on this section and then put your name plaque, about the size of a name badge, mm. on the wall, you can. So we were just leaving the graveyard and we crossed the road and there was this big new yellow Lo and behold. wall that had some words on it and we thought, what's that? So we held up our Google Translator camera and it said cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> so we crossed the road and walked through the gap in the wall, which kind of went round and it's all very well landscaped. Beautiful walkway with these lovely yellow stones. It leads you into a middle bit where it looks like there's going to be a well or a water feature and then you keep going through more walls and there's a new graveyard. And this is obviously where they're burying people from now onwards, but you can already see the, the way they've structured it. It's going to be pretty beautiful. Very, very attractive. 
So obviously people who die from now onwards are being, um, if I say planted again, <laughs> being buried in this uh, new cemetery. But yeah, it's beautiful the way they're starting to landscape it already. There's areas you can see that are going to go in and hedges that will curve around to give some privacy to those graves. And there's also some areas of like concrete. They've created the structure for the new graves to go in and we can't quite work out what that's about because it looks like it's all concrete. It's like a concrete grid. Hmm. But, you know, elegantly done. But whether they dig through the concrete and they're putting a coffin in, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll put some photos on the blog so you can see what we're talking about. But, uh, yeah, it's really lovely. And it goes out into open sort of countryside beyond. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite stunning. This this feels like how, again, Belgium would do something from the start. If they were starting a new cemetery, this has got a lot of thought gone into it. It's not just, oh, we've got a field, let's start burying people. The whole structure of it, a lot of architecture, design, yes, yeah, design. design, care, respect, a lot of respect and seeps out of what they're doing. The main thing you've not mentioned is that there's two stands with More new watering, watering cans. cans and new token systems. So each stand holds four washing cans. Yeah. And you can hear them just very gently in the wind, very <laughs> hollow plastic knocking sounds as the, uh, almost like a, some sort of artistic installation. Yep. And they're attached with the same trolley system where you put your coin in, you get your watering can, you fill it up with a tap, and then you take it back again. It's just genius. I'm absolutely just blown away by this simple yet effective idea for people not stealing watering cans. So we're going to head back to our accommodation now and try not to come across any other cemeteries on the way and get distracted by. But uh, yeah, overall, I'm very impressed with the variety here. What's the thing that sort of surprised you the most about these two cemeteries? Well, the same as you. I think the variety, the different styles, very little uniformity. I think you mentioned the war, Commonwealth war graves around us in this region, uh, which are just the pinnacle of uniformity. And this seems to be quite the opposite. Very different styles, very different tributes. Mm. Lack, lack of tribute to many. Lots of photos. But even in this new one, like I said, the graves are all quite different again. But yet they've also got that section with the, the marble posts where they're obviously putting people's ashes. They're all the same, quite regimented. Yeah, it's interesting. The photos are the thing I think that stand out most for me. A lot of photos and very little words about the people that have died. It's like it's not a priority at all. More about the face than the story. And you want a photo on your headstone? No, I don't want a photo. I haven't found a photo of me yet that I would like on my headstone. We'll need to get choosing if, if that changes. Maybe we'll do a photo shoot. I don't want a pre photo nice, shoot. Some nice blue curtains behind <laughs> us. I'll do it for you. I welcome that. <laughs>